you know what? I'll just say this. Is the grocery store gonna get mad at me if I complain about the carts not being returned? Wait, what? <laughs> like, if I come on the podcast and complain about something or talk about something, yeah. am I supposed to talk about no people, places, or things while I'm here? Honey, you've got a big storm coming. Hello, everyone. How are you today? I hope you're having a really good day so far. If you are new here, my name's Taylor, and I come to you from Baltimore City, Maryland, where here on my YouTube channel, I feature content that is generally focused on knitting or spinning. And in this week's episode of what I call the Thread to Men podcast, I thought I would share with you a few of the things that I've been wearing the most this winter. Um, but then I thought, you know, how many times am I going to show you the same things I've shown again and again um, here and there on my channel? And I don't know, I just thought I would try to pretend I had a video idea ready to record for you all. But the truth is, I haven't had very much time at all to think about knitting or spinning for that matter. And when I um, think about sitting down to record, all I have are a bunch of distracting thoughts in my mind, things that are not content related. Mostly anxieties and fears and all kinds of distractions. Um, and I haven't even really been knitting a lot. So I just kind of feel a little bit behind in my creative process. And I thought instead of pretending I have a video to share this week, I would just sit down and knit with you all and check in and see how you guys are doing. I'm doing exceptionally well, all things considered. Um, I had a really great week. Brian and I had so much fun last Saturday on our hike. Um, we hiked for like two hours and 45 minutes and I was so tired when we got home that I took a nap and I never nap. I am not a napper. So that was really fun. We've had a great Valentine's Day. Um, Brian and I, we did, we did skincare and I, we did a a clay mask in the tub and then he did my LED face mask for the first time which he enjoyed so um, that was you know fun and relaxing and so I've been having a good week um, but you know as usual I just sort of go to work and I come home and I hang out with my pets and I clean my house and I try to get to knitting although I don't always succeed in that I had a really hard time picking up the button band for this cardigan. Um, in months past, I had used a gel polish on my nails. This is also a gel polish, but it's a very different kind. Um, and I, instead of being smart and using the gel polish remover, I just picked off the polish. And so I really damaged my nails. And they, at this point, are almost all the way grown out, except for the very ends of my nails. So. They're a little weak and fragile right now. They're very bendy and I'm not using the same products anymore. So um, my nails are healthier than they've ever been, but I'm very close to growing out the worst damage of them. Anyway, it was really hard to get the leverage I needed to pick up stitches for this button band. And um, it just, I just put it off. I put it off again and again and it just, I don't know. It wasn't my comfort zone. I don't like picking up button bands. <laughs> I just don't. I don't know anyone that does. But it's more, um, it's, it's my preferred method over knitting the button band as you work because I, I like a cohesive collar button band thing. I don't know that I've ever knit a cardigan where the ribbed collar is separate from the button band. I've always done it continuous. Um, so that's the way I like it. And I would hate to have to decide before the cardigan is nearly finished where my buttons will be. So there's that. Can you tell how bad my posture is when I'm knitting? I try to sit upright, but it's just very hard to do. Anyway, I thought I would sit and knit with you guys. I'm just, I just feel so very far behind on things. I thought I would have this pattern written by now. 
and on top of that I have to file my taxes so it's like I just feel like there's not enough time in the week um we went through a stretch I think it was like Thanksgiving and then Christmas and New Year's where it felt like every other week was a three-day weekend and three or four-day weekend there was snow in January too so now that we're well into February and the weeks are all five day weeks, I'm just getting a little bit spread thin on the extra stuff I do each week. Um, I gotta say, it's not the simplest task of recording a weekly video and working full time. It is, it is not an ideal balance. And so I just let myself not record last week and I tried not to feel any type of way about that, but I have a very structured weekly schedule of recording on Saturday morning. And it's almost like I'm sacrificing a lot in order to be here. And I don't know if the, not that it's worth it, because I, I do think it's worth it, but I just don't know that I have like I don't know if I have the gas in my tank to get to my destination, if that makes sense. I feel like on these five day weeks where there's a lot happening at work and I can't even think like, oh, what am I gonna do when I get home? Or what am I gonna work on this weekend? Or what am I excited to pick up next? Like, I just don't have time in my day to think about being creative. It's like I, I never filled my tank in order to travel along this little journey with you all. So I'm kind of just, um, I feel like right now I'm like Fred Flintstone inside my car, like self propelling it <laughs> to get somewhere, but I don't know what the point of it all is anymore at this point, um, except to gain some sense of relatedness. I, I don't know about you, but I don't know anyone in my day-to-day -day life that also knits garments. So I really like joining you all here on this platform um, to connect and share in the excitement of wool and knitting. And that's about it. That's, that's all, folks. I'm still working on the same projects I've been working on. I can't really say any more about them. Haven't gotten too much done on any of them. I don't think I've knit the, um, I don't even know the name of this, the artist shawl. Haven't worked on this since before the Super Bowl. And that was like weeks ago. Um, so there's that. I'm like inches away from finishing my second sleeve on the chained oblivion, but I'm so close to having this finished. And I do need to finish drafting the instructions for this to hopefully get it into testing soon. I just need to pick up one thing and plug away. And it's not that the YouTube channel gets in the way of that. It's just if I'm behind in making, what do I possibly have to share with you all? Not a lot. I could do more, um, you know, research and development and find interesting patterns to discuss, but I've barely even been on social media. And so I'm kind of out of the loop on what's new. I know Andrea's published a tessellated cardigan. I've never really been um, one to jump on her patterns right away. I feel like years ago, I used to buy her patterns as soon as they came out, but I just kind of feel like I have so much to get to. I don't really jump on anything new anymore. Um, and the same thing goes for yarns. I have so much fiber to spin and so much excitement around my own hand spun that I don't really pay the closest attention to the yarns out there on the market. There's a few I think about wanting to buy, but without a particular project in mind, I don't allow myself to splurge these days on yarn, at least not while I have so much available to me at the moment to work with. And I'm on the hunt for a pattern right now, and I have no idea what. I don't know if it's a shawl pattern. I don't know if it's a 
sweater or a cardigan pattern, but I have, I think it's, I think like 400 and maybe 560 grams. It's either 460 or 560. It's enough to make almost anything of a fingering to sport weight um, sweater quantity of my hand spun. And I'm not sure that I want to come up with my own pattern because anytime I do that, I feel like I want to, I want to go through the extra process of grading it and publishing it and sharing it with you all. Um, but I don't, I don't know that I want to do that again with hand spun because it's just too difficult to make it, um, to measure it, you know, like hand spun is so unique in its density that. I want to make sure I'm providing accurate yardage measurements and stuff like that. So, yeah. So I don't know that I want to create my own garment to knit that sweater quantity with, but um, I do need a pattern in my life that I want to knit it into. I Part of me wants to knit a shawl. Another part of me wants another cardigan, but... I have been knitting cardigans almost nonstop. If I have three on the needles right now and at least three new cardigans, newish cardigans in my wardrobe, how many cardigans do I really need? I don't know. Um, so I'm thinking I might knit a shawl. I just haven't decided. I think maybe a really nice big shawl could be ideal. Let me know if you have any thoughts. I wonder what you're working on right now, if you uh, have any plans for your weekend. Maybe you're not even watching this on the weekend. Maybe it's a weekday. Maybe you're at work and you're just listening to me in the background. But I hope you're doing well. What you're excited to pick up and cast on next. I think once I get through this um, waffle pattern, I will be well on my way to knitting that. I do find fingering weight shawls to be somewhat difficult to focus on because it, it feels like the growth is so slow. At least with a sweater, you kind of have a variability of the length of each round or rows. Like at first, a lot of the sweaters I work are top down. And at first it feels like you're, you're making a lot of progress and then a little bit of progress. And then once you split the sleeves off and join the front and back, then you're making even more progress. And then you get to the sleeves and it's like really fast progress because those, the diameter is so much narrower than the yoke or body even. And there's this sort of cadence to knitting a sweater that feels like attainable, but when it comes to shawls, at least the shawls I have knit, oh, you know what? I need to stop and think about what kind of button band do I want here? Oh, Nelly, slow down, Taylor. Let's think about this. I talked about not, not knitting any buttons. Onto this cardigan, but I'm almost an inch. I don't know, do I have a measuring tape in here? Not really. I'm almost an inch into this button band now, and I have to start thinking about placing my buttons. Why don't we take a break and pull some buttons out and pick out some buttons for this cardigan? So these were the buttons I planned to knit. Knit? Goodness gracious, Taylor. Um, these are the buttons that I planned to attach to this cardigan. They kind of have the same sort of tone as the overall yarn. And they're not too heavy, but they are metal, so they carry some weight. And one is rather light, but having eight attached to one side I don't know if they're the perfect match, but they're definitely in the running. And I feel like with a worsted weight yarn, a button of this size might be most ideal. 
if it were a DK or a fingering, it might be too big. I think that these coconut buttons Let's see. These coconut buttons, they might be a little too warm toned. Uh, they, they don't look bad. They look a little rustic, which the yarn is kind of rustic. I should probably get some shots. I'll put some shots of the um, buttons against the fabric. And, oh. If I don't make up my mind which button to use while recording, I probably will know which one to use once I'm done editing. But I'd love to know your opinions. I also have these smaller buttons. These are more like a sewn garment size button or maybe a fingering weight type of button. But I like the look of this sort of black and bronze. So I think it's gonna be a choice between Star might be chewing my bags up, but I think it's gonna be a choice between the metal buttons and the coconut buttons. So large versus medium. Oh, I think those brass ones really make such a good match. And because it is a worsted weight yarn, I think the larger ones might be the better fit. I actually used those same buttons on my bookkeeper cardigan which I'm not sure are the best. I think that maybe I, could, I might switch out those brass buttons for the coconut ones on my bookkeeper because they're just a little heavy for that DK weight fabric. Mm -mm. No, no, no. Okay, so I guess at this point I need to stop knitting and um, figure out how wide am I going to make this? How wide am I going to make this button board? Because if I use these wide buttons, and this is where they're centered, I think it's like the perfect time I think now's the time to decide my buttons. All right, I'm going to stop recording now and I'm going to work my buttonholes. So I wanna thank you all so much for joining me here in this unconventional episode of the Thread to Men podcast. I wanna thank you so much for watching. If you want to find me on social media, my name's Taylor E. Owen on Ravelry and Instagram. You can find me over on TikTok. It's Taylor Knits. I want to thank you again so much for being here. I hope you all have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and that you take care.